So we started work on the B9 robot. Um, what we're going to do is have a sort of a daily entry. What we're going to try anyway. Um, so for today's work, we're starting on the uh, the legs because I'm still waiting for um, some electronic parts to come in. So I mean the instructions uh, uh, tells you to start with the oop, 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 with the head basically. The head assembly, but there's a fair bit of electronics that need to go in that, so I'm going to just sort of play it by ear and do the parts that I that I can that I can do without all the electronics. So basically, uh, we're starting with the bottom, which I would thought would make sense anyway. Um, so what we have is uh, the soil sampler. Uh, you got the the halves, and there's two end sort of end plates. So we're going to make two of those. Then you've got these pieces that, that sit in the bottom of it. And then you've got these uh, sort of vinyl pieces that, that connect into those. And these knee hinges. Okay. So, what we've done. We've uh, cleaned up and glued the two center parts, center halves together. Uh, this has the door, the opening, opening door for the soil sampler, which I'm not sure how I'm going to use that yet because I think it's pretty much like you have it opened or closed. But even though it's hinged, but the the soil sampler that comes out, so I have to work that out what we're going to do. But it's not a big deal. Uh, actually, that's just here. So I'll just clean that up. Bit of putty work on it. I went a bit heavy on the putty today. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we have that which. It sits in behind that little door. Um, <clears throat> what I've done underneath, uh, on one side we're going to have the battery compartment, and on the other side we're going to have where the speaker sits for the sound. So <clears throat> this is how I'm going to be powering it. I've got one of these uh, sort of three 1.5 volts uh, containers, compartments, whatever it is, and it pretty much fits exactly in there. So I've added. Uh, the, the, on the foot piece, I've added a couple of magnets and some paper clips there. I'll just wind my clothes now with all this uh, putty everywhere. But basically, it'll sit like that. And it's going to be underneath anyway, so you won't you won't ever see it. But it's just a bit of extra. It won't come out. You should be able to pull it out. Uh, so that makes it easier to change the battery later. So I've got did that on both sides, even though you probably won't need to tamper with the speaker. But uh, the reason is I thought I've got to do it now, otherwise we've got to do it later. Uh, just in case uh, I end up putting the batteries on this side and the speaker there, because of the way the soil sampler works. Um, you know, if it needs to move up and down, it might interfere with the, with the battery compartment. The battery battery holder, I should say. So yeah, so that's that's uh, that sort of thing done. Uh, the rest of it was just cleaning up. I mean, these pieces here, nothing to them. They fit like a glove, basically. Um, yeah, you could even do that with one hand, no problem at all. The side pieces, on the other hand, that's a different story. Um, these basically cover that. Now they had these uh, sort of pin and pin and socket or pin tab, whatever you want to call it, and what would happen is when you put these two things together, uh, you, you see it in between, and it just looks goofy, I don't, like, you know, it's not there on the real robot, so there's no need for it, um, and, I mean, I, I don't see it really without it, I, I don't see it, like, having an issue with stability or anything like that, if there is, I can easily put something in the middle of it where you won't see it as much, it just looks silly having it in the front, but anyway, um, <clears throat> so I've taken those off, and I've just uh, filled them a little bit, and the other thing is there was a slight issue here with the fit, um, the pins on the bottom of this did not match up or line up with these holes here, 
Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but it's the same on both sides. So now that I've taken them off, uh, it's a little bit tighter fit, so it might with one hand, yep. Yeah, now that I've taken those off, I mean, it's just simply going to glue on anyway, it's not a, not a big issue. It's not like it needs a lot of pressure or, or anything like that. Um, and that's basically it. That's what we're up to, that's what we've done today. It'll probably like, uh, I don't know, four hours worth of work. Um, so tomorrow we're going to be sanding down all the all the red stuff, all the putty. Hopefully we can get this seam organised because it's a pretty bad seam and it's got a pretty hefty step to it. You don't have to worry about it in here because you can't see it. But basically right around, uh, we need to take care of that. So hopefully it won't take all all my time tomorrow at the bench. Hopefully it's it, I'm thinking that it's going to, but <laughs> let's hope not. <clears throat> But yeah, that's where we stand for now. Um, uh, of course, we've got the other pieces here, which which are cleaned up. The uh, the piece that goes on top of here, and uh, these are uh, those pieces there. And of course, we've got the hinges and stuff in here that go into this little slot, and that slot, and that slot, and that slot. Okay, I'll check in with you in the next video. All right, guys, uh, day two on the B9 robot. <coughs> Um, I spent most of the day today just sanding the uh, the seams here because uh, I did apply a, f a fairly heavy amount of uh, of filler, which uh, incidentally the filler I used, uh, well, I just put it in this bottle, but it's it's just an automotive uh, spot filler, similar to what you guys use the Bondo. It's just that. So I, what I do is uh, I get it in a tin and I just put it in this little bottle. So the whole tin doesn't dry it, basically opening up all the time. And just use it from that. And once I get to be dry, just throw it out. Um, but yeah, so I sand it down uh, till it's, you know, relatively close to the plastic. And then what I do is I get a marker and I mark over the filler onto the plastic and then sand down. So you know once the marker's gone, then whatever's left behind that is, is a low spot. I'm sure most of you guys already know that, but in case you didn't. Uh, so I've done that on both pieces here. And what I have done at the moment is I've used this uh, liquid surface primer from Tamiya, which is basically you know, a brushable primer, but it's a little bit thicker. So I usually put that over the seams just to, well, for one, to see <clears throat> what's you know what more there is to do, kind of just like putting primer on it. I guess you just... You can see what's going on, and two, it kind of fills in sort of minor imperfections. Uh, I can see on this side, I need to fix the seam up a bit more, so I guess that's more work for tomorrow. So, <clears throat> hopefully, this is the, the majority of the seams in this kit because most of the other stuff seems to be all right. But I've seen a lot of people leave these seams, and I don't know, I don't particularly like it. If it's not supposed to be a seam on the on the on the robot, then I don't think it should be there. It, it is a lot of work to get rid of it, but I think in the end, if you're going to be spending money and doing all the lighting and all that sort of stuff, it's worth taking the extra time. <coughs> uh, another thing that I want to point out is I have these uh, hemostats, I think they're called, and what I do is I just bundle up a bit of sandpaper, and it makes it easy to get into tight spots, you know, in case you can't, I mean, and this one is pretty easy, but sometimes you've got really tight spots that... Uh, you know, you wrap up the sand, sandpaper and you're trying to get in there and your fingers get in the way and whatever, but, you know, something like this makes it really easy and these, these won't come off. Not with the grip these things have got. I used to use uh, these tweezers, or squeezers, I guess you call them, and they do a similar sort of job. I used to do the same sort of thing, but uh, after finding out about these, uh, I mean... They're so much easier, so much better. Um, and that's pretty much all I've done today. I was uh, fix, you know, fix up that that's well, try to fix up that seam. Uh, the next thing I've started working on the hands or the arms, so I've uh, cleaned up the the parts for those. Um, and there's nothing to it really. That just you know, the claws go together. They, sit inside there and that goes on there and you're done so it's pretty simple 
I uh, just got one more little claw to clean up, which I ran out of time today, so I'll probably just do that tomorrow and get everything else prepared here, ready to be painted. You know, decide which arms we're going to use, whether we're going for the short ones or the long ones. I'm thinking the short. They, I think they look better. The long arms kind of looks like he's a bit, uh, you know, crazy. Uh, but that's it for today's. I'll see you in the next one.